Hi, this is IK Handel. Welcome back to part 8 in the series of rigging video tutorials. Okay, by now you've probably made quite a few skeletons or part skeletons and it would, wouldn't it be nice if you could save them all to one library so that you had a collection that you could use for maybe future characters or whatever that you are building. So I'm going to show you how to make a new library to keep things nice and neat and tidy. If you left mouse click on the library browser, it will bring up this window. And on the top line is main library place. If you right mouse click on that, click left click that is on create library. We'll call this skeletons. And we'll make this library type skeleton. And click OK. The new library will show up right at the bottom of the list down here. Double left click and here's your new library. I'll close this. Now if I select my skeleton, right mouse click, insert as skeleton and there we have our skeleton. If I want to use a skeleton in a scene and I drag it over with my left mouse button and there he is. Obviously we don't want to so I'll just delete that one. So that's the way to save a collection of skeletons. Right, on back with the rigging. I've had a thought after um, the last video, number seven, and I thought it would probably be better on reflection to actually show you the difference in action between FK, which is movement and arcs based on rotation, and IK, which is movement based on straight lines. So I'm not going to show you how to do it now because I don't want to confuse things and make things more complicated than they need to, but I've saved a very quick animation of this leg. What I've done is I've set a pose at this position and then a pose with the ankle somewhere over here. I've tried to keep, I've done this using IK, using the IK handle and I've basically saved it here, saved it here so it should be a nice straight line in IK along this surface here which I'm using just to show you a horizontal plane. For this example, I'm just going to turn off Preserve Bone Orientation. I'll tell you about that a bit later. OK, at the minute, the settings I've got are Full IK and Posing Only Off. I've got Lock Children, which is just basically sorting out these two. Just ignore that for the minute. What I want you to do is watch this ankle joint and how it moves in relation to this straight edge here. So I'll just play this, and this is in IK, and you'll see that it's following in a really nice straight line between the point I set here and the point I set here. Okay, let me just go back. Let me set this to FK now, which is based on arcs. Bearing in mind I'm not changing any of my saved animation, I'm just changing how it's interpolated. So it's now going to interpolate the same animation but in forward kinematics in arcs and watch where the ankle goes it goes down and through the floor and then back up to the final point which is where I'd saved my second point so the software what it's doing is basically saying this is forward kinematics based on rotation so I'm going to rotate it around this top hip point and in order to get from here to here, by rotating up there, it needs to go in an arc. Otherwise, I'd have to start bending down here, which is not forward kinematics. That would be IK. I need to go back again. If I change this to IK, now you see a nice straight line. Because it is working out the calculations, the maths for this joint, in order to bend to keep this nice and straight along this plane. Okay, let me now turn posing only on, which as you remember I said basically is the same as turning this to full FK. So I've got this setting in IK. I'm going to override it by putting posing only on. And now you'll see it's back to an FK type arcing motion. So effectively, posing only is exactly the same as turning this down to full FK. They're one and the same thing. 
personally, I can prefer to use this slider. You can have it halfway in between. Now you see it's not cutting in quite as much. So it's allowing some movement of this angle between the upper and lower leg, but not as much as full IK. So it's digging into this floor just a bit. So hopefully that's a really good graphical illustration of the difference between forward K or forward kinematics FK and inverse kinematics IK. Personally, if I'm using an IK handle, I would much prefer to have an IK behavior because if I'm saving my two points using an IK handle, it's because I want IK, not FK. Alrighty, hopefully that's cleared that and made it nice and uh, straightforward for you. Now, so far we have made one IK handle. And if we go into the IK add modify mode and click on it. Hang on, let me just select the object first, my mistake. You'll see that this lock, this position lock, is automatically activated whenever I use that IK handle. But we're not stuck with one IK handle on our rig. We can have lots and lots. So let's make another one. We're going to go and add one up here. And then this time we're going to put a new position lock and we'll place it on the toe. Usual drill. I want to associate the IK handle with this lock. Let me just go into here because it's kind of small. And now every time I use this IK handle, this lock will be activated. Every time I use this IK handle, that will become unactivated and thus will become activated. So let's have a look. Now because we've done a new IK handle, it's going to come up with a global default. Right mouse click brings them up in the stack view. So we want the lock children. Well, actually, let's take lock children off. Now what we're going to get is this behavior. And if you look at the toe, you'll see that everything is rotating around that toe. And the toe position is being held in place. Let me just go to Dynapose. In fact, now let me go to Object Mode, select this to smooth this up, just to make it a bit more. So I'm being fussy here, aren't I? Alrighty. And there you go, you've got a rotating toe. Let's build another one. Let's go to here, to here. And this time we'll associate this IK handle with this lock. Now, if you remember, this IK handle is already activating that lock. Now what I'm going to do is click this one and also activate that same lock but with this one. So this time what we're doing is we don't only have an IK handle that's running for two bones from here up to here or in this case from here down to here. This one is running all the way from here right to the top which is four bones. All right, mouse click. Let me just clear these to make it more obvious which one it is. We'll get rid of the default settings. I'll get rid of all of them, change it to IK. And now look at the motion you're getting. And look, I can tap the floor. And all the various angles will change in order for this IK handle to reach its goal when this is locked up here. So now we've got one rig with three different IK handles all doing different things. Okay, now one thing to bear in mind is all these IK handles can be shifted away if that's what you want so that you've got a better visibility of your joints or whatever. I'll just move that back. These 
locks can also be moved away, move scaled and rotated, like so. But in the case of position locks, I would recommend that you do not move them. Certainly scale them and rotate them, but don't move them. And let me show you why. I'm going to come down. Well, let me first of all go into the IK. We're going to use this handle, which activates this lock. So at the minute, the motion is like so, and it's rotating around that toe. Let me show you a possible, it's a gremlin I believe, but if you're aware of it, then it shouldn't be a problem. Let me select this, and now I'm going to move it away. I'm going to move it quite a long way away. Back into the IK mode. Now I want you to watch the toe. And what it's actually doing is maintaining its distance from that lock. Now you wouldn't normally move a lock that far away. I've done this just to exaggerate what's happening. But to be honest, that gives you unexpected behaviour, which if you don't realise, is going to be very confusing. So I would thoroughly recommend that you don't move locks. Keep them wherever they're created. Sure, you can scale, rotate, whatever. Just my advice, don't move them.